It's one of the most complex and polarizing issues on the political map. From Camp David to Madrid, from Oslo to Beirut, peace talks have failed to end the 67-year-old conflict between Israel and Palestine. And in the meantime, Israelis and Palestinians continue to live alongside one another. Beyond separation walls and barriers, both nations share claims to the same land. We're on our way into Ramallah. We've just crossed the Kalandia border crossing. Now, if you wanted to get into Israel from the Palestinian Authority, you'd have to go through one of these crossings. Now, for Israel, of course, this is a way of keeping terrorism out of the country. For the Palestinians, it's a sign of occupation. Two million people live here, governed by the Palestinian Authority. While in Gaza, where another 1.8 million Palestinians live, Hamas is in control. But it's difficult running a country that doesn't exist. The Palestinian Authority operates as an elected government. It has a police force, but it lacks the military power and internal unity present in most governments. At the presidential compound, the Mukata, the focal point is the tomb of former Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat. In the Palestinian fight for statehood, which failed to win enough votes at the United Nations last year, no one is more iconic than Arafat, today a symbol from beyond the grave. Behind us is the place where uh, Yasser Arafat, uh, the late uh, Palestinian leader, uh, were buried. One day this place will be moved to East Jerusalem. Arafat wished and every Palestinian wished is to be buried in, uh, in Jerusalem, the capital, capital of the state of Palestine. Ashraf Khatib works in the negotiations department, meeting with international leaders in the hope of drawing up a long-term peace deal. Originally from Jerusalem and working for the PLO for 10 years, Ashraf has a deep connection to the Palestinian cause. He has lived it his entire life. We want a Palestinian uh, state uh, lived side by side with Israel, neighboring each other, and also where people can have a normal relationship with, with each other. It's a peaceful struggle, and this is what we have uh, been, been going through. It's a journey, and, and one day we will, we will reach to it. The so-called Israeli occupation refers to the Israeli military presence around the territories. Soldiers at checkpoints control the free movement of Palestinians, while separation walls divide families. Occupation is basically you are deprived from your rights. This is a policy of the Israeli occupation. Ashraf works for the Palestinian Liberation Organization, or PLO. While the Palestinian Authority governs the West Bank, the PLO represents the people internationally as they seek statehood. Founded in 1964, the PLO was once known as a terrorist organization. But 30 years later, Yasser Arafat rebranded the group by officially renouncing violence. Since then, the PLO is known for its policy of peaceful resistance. The PLO and the Palestinian Authority work in conjunction with each other. And like Arafat, current Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas sits as leader of both institutions. For as long as peace talks with Israel are deadlocked, the PLO is actively pleading its case to international bodies like the European Union and the United Nations Security Council. When you ask the Europeans and also other countries to be active, you want them to, to, to take responsibility towards what has been going on uh, for the last uh, 21 years. But taking a simple stroll through Ramallah, one doesn't feel the weight of the conflict. Lions Square is the center of the town and doesn't disappoint in local hospitality. In spite of the struggle, many Ramallah residents are happy with life in Palestine. Life in Ramallah is wonderful, better than overseas, better than Europe or any other place. But though spirits may be high, painful reminders are inscribed in the background, most prominently on the separation wall. The security wall behind me is a reality of life for people living in Palestinian cities. Now, contrary to common belief, more than 97% of this wall is actually a chain link fence, and only 2% are a wall like this, mostly in densely populated areas like in Ramallah. Now, a lot can be said for and against this wall, but one thing is for sure, in the year of 2002, there was a huge wave of suicide terrorism, and erecting this wall almost completely eliminated it. Construction of the wall began in 2003, and has been an issue of contention ever since. The wall is yet another reason Palestinians seek their own state out of the shadow of Israeli occupation. And yet, despite the challenges, people remain optimistic. Abu Khana Handel witnessed firsthand the reality of the conflict for 60 years of his life. What gets him out of bed every morning is the hope that his descendants will live in a country of their own. The most important is to have real peace between each other and to be good neighbors and to save each other, not to be against each other. What's going on today is very, very, very dangerous. And it's not acceptable. Abu Khana was born in the Palestinian territories where he still lives with his wife and children. They moved from Bethlehem to Ramallah 25 years ago when he began working in real estate and hospitality management. Like most people here, patriotism and national pride define his identity. I love my country. 
I live in my country. My, our families are living here. Our friends are living here. Our grandfathers, they used to live here. Palestine is one of the best lands in the globe. But even with his love for Palestine, he is growing impatient. Every time there is, you know, negotiation and negotiation, and after one year, two years, three years, something happened, everything is changed. And we start again with negotiation. But who is losing? We are losing. Nothing in the Middle East is simple. The conflict continues and the cost is high, paid in blood by the citizens of both nations. But beyond the challenges and obstacles, the Palestinian plight continues as the dream for independence grows stronger.